Hello and welcome to Pure Fishing TV. My name is Adam Reuter and for the next few moments we're going to be talking about gulp jing grubs and gulp minnow grubs. Now these two guys are single tail curl grubs, one of the oldest formats or oldest styles of soft plastic on the planet. There's a good reason they're still around, they catch a lot of fish. Whether you're enticing them with that tail or trying to get an aggressive reaction bite, it doesn't matter. The single tail grub, it's still a killer. Let's see how it works. Okay, there's really nothing to rigging the uh, either the, the minnow grub or the jigging grub. It, it, you know, you just use a, a standard jig head. They're uh, they're not overly uh, technical to use. Um, most people would just put them on a jig head. You can, of course, uh, you know, drop shot them with a paternoster style and just a, a, an unweighted hook. But um, I think you know, 99.9% .9 of the people are just going to use a. Um, a jig head for these guys. So obviously the, the key importance here is to work out where the out point of the hook is and uh, if we line the jig head up first before we stick it through we want the jig head to come out and there's, there's actually nice little ridges on these guys so you can sort of count how many ridges back but basically we want the hook point to come out somewhere in there. So I'll, uh, I'll start that pretty much straight down the middle. It's not overly imperative that the hook uh, rides right through the middle of these baits. Um, you know that they don't particularly have any real direction in which they uh, they need to swim but you can see I've got the tail rigged upside down there I think that's one important fact that you need to get right is that the the tail rather than the tail swimming back upwards as it will do on the minnow grub I like to rig them down this way I think what that does is as it, as this guy starts to fall through the water column and and the jig head starts to level out a little bit I still think that it helps to push that, that tail back up and around and, and create that unfurling or uncorkscrewing uh, style um, tail movement that, uh, that's synonymous with these, these um, single tail grubs. So I just think in that format you just get a little bit more action. Not a lot, but a little bit more action when, when you're down deep or uh, when there's not much movement being imparted onto the lure or you, you're just you're letting it, um, you're waiting for a bite on the drop say. So uh, yeah, just, just try to rig them with the tail facing the opposite direction to the hook and, and you'll be in business. Uh, unfortunately the minnow grub comes stuck, stock standard like this. Um, I mean, he does have a fairly cylindrical style body, but um, you know, for those people who really care, there is an eye, a gill, and a fin, and uh, and some sort of little dorsal ridge across the back. So, uh, it is a, a minnow at the front and a grub at the back. You know, that's why it's called a minnow grub. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, you know, just again lining it up, working out where the out point is. You know, it's right about there. If you are a little bit conscious about where the out point is and you're unsure, just make a small mark with your hook point like that. And then when you flex it, you'll be able to see where that hook mark is. So as you're feeding the hook down. Um, now, another point is you can actually also shallow rig these guys. And shallow rigging means um, to, to rig the bait so that the hook shank's not directly through the middle of the bait, but it's, it's running a little bit higher. And that, uh, that gives you a little bit more gape to play with. So we'll, I'll rig this one uh, a little shallower. So we just start it more so um, in the, the top of his head rather than directly down the middle and just just under the surface that is and then through the out point and then run it up and you can see that we've got a lot more belly down below and the hook shank is just running through that section there so uh, a nice way to run them I think uh, shallow rigging uh, as I said it does give you this much more gape in here so the gape we're talking about that you're going to get by shallow rigging is, is in this area here so you can see there's so much more bite radius on that hook now but uh, that, that is pretty much, that's how you rig them because that's how they're rigged. Simple stuff. One of the other key features of a grub tail is their cylindrical body. Uh, it is basically just a tube or a pipe. It does start at the tail a little skinnier, get a little fatter in the middle and then start to taper off a little bit more. But realistically what you're looking at is, is just a tube of soft plastic. So the thing about, uh, about these guys is if you're using a much shorter shanked hook, you can still use this uh, this size of tail. All you need to do is chop them back from the start. So for a hook of say this size, which is like a size one, um, you know we've got a quarter of an ounce of lead, which is nice. But the hook size is still uh, a little bit too small for this whole length of body. So what we'll need to do is maybe just knock about that much of it off. So you can um, 
You can bite them or you can cut them with your scissors. Obviously, um, because I'm not using scissors right now, that should indicate to you uh, quite, um, quite positively that I have left my scissors at home. Never mind. That's what we need to do, is just shorten it up a little bit like that. So you can, uh, as I say, biting them is probably not the preferable way to go. Um, but uh, using your scissors to cut your gulp up, sliding the hook in, and there we go. We've just uh, we've transformed uh, what was a four-inch uh, jigging grub into is probably now a two-inch jigging grub with a, a very very large fat tail. Oh, and just one more thing before I go, what might happen to uh, to a fairly heavy set grub tail like this? Um, you know, it's got a, a very acute curl on it. Uh, if you're running it fairly slowly, or if you're using a much lighter jig head than this, and on the drop, you're not quite getting that, that nice tail um, swim action out of it that you might like, you can free these tails up just a little bit by putting little nicks on the outside of the, uh, the outside rim of the tail. And, and all you need to do is come in a few mils, stick a hook point in, and just, and just tear it out. So just do um, sort of three or four of those around, right around, you know, like something like that. And what you've done is you've put these little, I mean, realistically, when it's swimming along, you're not gonna notice that, there, that there's cuts, but, but you've fanned some little cuts there. Uh, and that, that just makes the tail so much more maneuverable. Oh, there you can see them a little better on the other side there. So that, that just makes the tail free up so much more. And that'll work. On, on virtually any single or double tail uh, curl grub. Just those little tiny nicks. You can do it with your scissors or you can do it with uh, something as simple as another hook and that will really make your, your grub tail swim a little bit better. And here you can see the beautiful uh, tail action on the drop as the, uh, the jig head has enough weight to drag that soft plastic down through the water column. And if you don't have enough weight in that system, the, the plastic won't be able to be uh, pulled through the water column fast enough to get that tail rotating. So if, it's, if you think that it's imperative that you have um, uh, action on the drop, then you need to ensure that you have enough weight to, uh, to actually get that tail to swim on the drop. Uh, if it's too light, you'll get no action or very little action at all. I mean, that's where those relief cuts can come in handy though. Um, if you are using uh, particularly lightweight because you have to for whatever reason, um, you can put those little slices in the tail and that will increase the tail movement with a lighter weight. But straight out of the packet, if you think that you need to, which, which is, you know, I think personally part of the deal is to, is to get that tail to swim on the drop. Um, it's, it's important to have enough weight in the jig head to be able to, uh, to allow that weight to, to pull the plastic through the water column to get that tail to swim. It'll always swim as you're lifting it. Don't worry about that. It'll always, uh, you know, it'll always swim when you're, when you're retrieving it physically with the rod or the reel. But it's the other half of the retrieve, which is always the drop that, um, that seems to be the important part. So. Just, just make sure, do a little swim test in front of yourself and just make sure that that's the case. Now because the, uh, the single tail grub doesn't really uh, imitate anything specific, you can use almost any retrieve you like, and I mean seriously any retrieve. This is the soft plastic that most people start with. It's certainly the soft plastic that I started with. Um, you know, double tails and single tails, they were, they were just the go, and they have a, an absolutely mesmerizing action in the water, they really do. Now the key to getting these guys to swim for you is to put them in front of yourself. Look at how they swim in the water in front of yourself. That's the key. You need to visualize what you want the soft plastic to look like and then throw it at the fish. So get your retrieves going in front of yourself in some clear water in a swimming pool anywhere. But just make sure that you know what your soft plastic is doing 
once you've pumped it way out wide like that. Okay, so probably the uh, first retrieve is, is again, uh, it's a stock standard. It's used almost, uh, you know, religiously throughout the world um, with every soft plastic known to man, and it is just the lift and, and jig retrieve. So hop, 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 two or three turns of the handle, drop the rod tick back down to the water, allow the plastic to retouch the bottom if that's your strike zone. If your strike zone is only two metres of water from the surface and you're fishing 10, of course you need to make sure that your soft plastic is swimming in just that top two metres of water. But um, for, for this type of country, land-based or you know, fishing to structure that you can see with your eyes, it might be a reef structure, it might be a sandbar, stuff that you can physically or, or you, know, you can see with your eyes through your Polaroid sunglasses here. You, know, you want to be able to, um, you want to, be able to get that on the bottom because you know majority of the fish species that you're going to want to catch, uh, uh, that's where they're going to be. So you can, you can do that, it doesn't have to be a methodic hop, 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 hop. After a while, you'll get in tune with your own style, and that might mean that you give it a bit of that, you know, a couple of fast jigs, and then wind up that slack, drop the, the rod tip back down to the, the water surface. It really is an easy, easy bait to use. Another classic retrieve with the single tail grub is the burn and kill, which is where you turn the handle really quickly and then stop and allow the soft plastic to sink. So it's gonna sink down and then when you burn it with the handle, it's gonna rise up towards you because don't forget we're at the surface and your, your soft plastic has sunk down, your soft bait sunk down. So when you burn the handle back, it's gonna come upwards, okay? So you need to allow it to drop back down into that strike zone area. But that's a, another killer. It's over quite quickly a lot of the times. Um, you don't have to put that many turns into it. You can uh, obviously just give it a couple of, of very short, sharp turns of the handle. Um, but most people will give it three or four. What that's supposed to do is it's supposed to imitate a bait fish or some other type of prey that has uh, seen the predator coming and is trying to escape. And then the predator goes, wow, I'm all over you, tiger, comes and grabs him. So uh, it's, it's a great um, aggressive uh, retrieve. You get a very aggressive response from fish, like a big bang on the rod tip. They really come and wallop it because, I mean, for, for all they know, this thing is trying to escape. And obviously when it stops and starts to sink again, uh, that's, that tends to be when they nail it. So hold on to your outfits when you're uh, doing the burn and kill. Good retrieve though.